Hi everybody, welcome to Simply Scuba. I'm answering questions from Google again, looking at regulators in particular. Regulators, if you're new to scuba diving, are the, the kind of the hoses and the mouthpieces that we breathe from. They come in a bunch of different styles and they have all sorts of different features on them. But today I'm answering questions inspired by Google, starting with the search term, how scuba regulator, and basically seeing where that takes us, starting with, Choosing a regulator, especially your first regulator, is a very personal thing because your regulators, they're an investment, something that you're gonna be using for years to come, but regulators are basically tools. That's how I sort of create an analogy for them. You get some that are multi-tools that kind of work for a few different things and others that are a bit more specialized. The first thing that you need to do is to understand the job that you have. Look at the scuba diving that you want to undertake as that will then define which regulator will be best for you or at least eliminate some. If you travel a lot then we have lightweight regulators made for travel but those ones they don't always do so good in cold waters so you're eliminating some types of scuba diving. Look for features on a regulator that will improve your diving experience and don't focus too much on the upfront cost. Obviously look at the price tag, but also look at the servicing costs, the long-term costs and servicing availability wherever you're going to be. Some regulators, they only need to be serviced every year, um, some of them every other year, and even some every three years. So before long, the actual long-term costs can end up being less. So always look at the long-term costs before deciding on a regulator buying regulators, have a chat with your local dive center or at least where you're going to get them serviced because it's important to know if you can get them serviced and discuss pros and cons of different features and materials. There's there's just a whole lot to regulators, especially choosing your first regulator and I can make an entire video just about this question, um, but hopefully that helps. Parts of the regulator we call stages, and then we have hoses that connect the two of them. The first stage is the metal block that attaches to the scuba diving cylinder. The first stage basically regulates the huge pressure inside of the diving cylinder down to a more sensible pressure and it regulates it. The first stage has a bunch of different ports where you can attach hoses at different parts and they're either going to be high pressure hoses for gauges and transmitters or low pressure for second stages, I'll talk about those in a second, and low pressure inflator hoses for your BCD and your dry suit and things. Your second stage is the actual breathing part that you put in your mouth. The second stage is basically a demand valve. So as you inhale, the valve opens and it gives you some of the pressure that's inside of the hose. And when you stop inhaling, the valve closes. Then your first stage tops up that hose more or less that's a very oversimplified way that they work but the first stage is the bit that attaches to your tank the second stage is the bit that you breathe from if you look after your regulators they can last for decades easily but think of them a bit like cars or triggers broom some parts need replacing over time the actual moving solid parts of a regulator don't tend to wear out that quickly. It's the softer O-ring seals and seats that can harden and actually split over time. Most regulators need servicing about once a year or after every 100 dives, whichever one comes first, to basically replace those parts and to adjust the regulator because there's a lot of springs and things that require sort of retensioning. Some regulators have extended servicing periods like every two years or every three years because of the materials and the overall design, but it also depends on how much you use them. If you're a professional and you use them every single day, then they should really be serviced every six months. If you leave them in storage for long periods, about six months again, they should really be serviced. It's it's important to serve your regulators well before you need them as well. Regulators, they do bed in at first, well, just after they're serviced or just after they're brand new. So after your very first dive with them, they can end up leaking and need adjusting. So take them for a check dive well before a big diving trip so you have time to get them adjusted. 
When you're buying a regulator, you'll hear a lot about balancing and overbalancing. Regulators are all about balancing pressures. Put simply, a balanced regulator will give you the same breathing experience no matter the depth. Balancing can also mean that the breathing experience doesn't change that much as your cylinder tank pressure starts to drop as well. Balancing overall is a good thing, you want it on your regulator. Unbalanced regulators, they would steadily get harder to breathe from the deeper you got or when your tanks start to run down. Overbalanced is when a regulator actually gets easier to breathe from the deeper down you go, or at least it can deliver more gas the deeper down you go. Balance regulators use the increase in water pressure around you as you dive deeper to adjust them and keep them at a stable level, stable level, sorry, but overbalanced actually use it to increase the possible output the deeper down you go. So if you really need to get more gas, it can deliver plenty, especially if you're donating to a second diver at depth, it can deliver plenty of gas. Most regulators today are just balanced. It's only the very cheap designs that are unbalanced, but it basically means that your breathing will stay stable throughout the entire dive if you have a balanced regulator. Regulators usually come in parts or complete sets. The most common way to buy a set of regulators is to buy the first stage and a primary second stage together in one box. You then add a matching octo or alternate air source, then a pressure gauge and any low pressure inflator hoses that you need. It's important that your octo matches brand to your first stage so that they are compatible. Some regulators will be available in something called stage 3 sets, which means that the octo is included in the box with the first stage and your primary second stage, and stage 4 sets, which means that it has all of that, including a pressure gauge. With both of those, all you really need to add is any inflator hoses that you might need. You can, if you really want to, buy each of the separate parts, including the hoses, and just assemble it all yourself. But it's not as simple as just screwing them all together. That part is the easy bit. Um, a lot of the time, it's perfectly fine. If you do just assemble a set of regulators, it can be perfectly fine. But because they weren't assembled together in the factory, they might need a little bit of tweaking just to make sure they're all balanced and syncing up together. This often requires specialist tools and skills, and you can damage your regulators if you go in fiddling not knowing what you're doing. The easiest way to buy a set of regulators is just to buy a stage three set, that's how most scuba divers buy regulators, and then just add the gauges and any inflator hoses that you want. And there we go, regulators. Um, if you have any particular questions about scuba regulators, let us know down in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, you often have a lot of choices when it comes to regulators and they are a pretty fundamental part of scuba diving kit, um, but you'll find them all on our website, simplyscuba.com with a link down in the description below. Thank you for watching everybody and of course, safe diving. Music